Well, hey, good afternoon, and welcome to the cooperative program stage, and we're so excited that you've joined us today for this conversation that we're going to have in serving our ethnic churches in the Southern Baptist Convention. My name is Willie McLaurin, and I'm serving as the interim president and chief executive officer for the executive committee, and I am so incredibly grateful for the men that we're having today on our panel discussion. And I want to introduce these men uh, these brothers who are serving our Southern Baptist Convention so well. Charles Grant, who is serving as our Executive Director for African American uh, Ministries uh, in the Southern Baptist uh, Convention. And uh, Peter Yanez is serving as our Asian American Executive Director. And last but not least, Luis Lopez is serving as our Hispanic executive uh, director. Each of these men uh, have a calling on their life to uh, expand the reach of our convention to their respective affinity uh, groups. And uh, this conversation today is just really a conversation about how we serve our ethnic uh, churches. And so, guys, uh, so grateful to be able to serve with each of you and uh, to just watch you every day. And, uh, and by the way, I get a chance of watching these guys in action uh, as they interact with pastors and churches across uh, the country. Many of you may or may not know, but the Southern Baptist Convention is one of the most ethnically and racially diverse conventions. Um, almost 24% of our churches are diverse. And so guys, as you think about the diversity of our network, uh, you men are helping to lengthen, strengthen, and deepen relationships across our racially diverse um, churches. And Peter, when I think about you, um, you travel all across um, the country engaging uh, Asian uh, churches. Tell me about the Asian collective strategy that you're using and what God is doing among Asian churches? Yeah, that's uh, thank you for the question. Two and a half years ago, I was tasked to connect and collaborate and celebrate our ethnicity among Asian American churches within the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, you should know that we have over 2,000 Asian churches across our convention with 175,000 membership, and, and that's huge, and that's huge. And we're grateful that uh, to do that is we have to uh, deal with diversity within our Asian context, and we have uh, over 27 Asian nationalities all in all, and we have over 24 million in population, and we have to be direct and we have to be very strategic on how to reach them. And so we, uh, we had this strategy that we thought of the past two and a half years now that we know it's working because the last two and a half years when we started, we have already all of this eight Asian National Fellowship very organized. And they have been existing for the past 40, 50 years. And how can we bring them together? That's a big question because of our diversity. And we're glad that finally, you know, we, we convinced all of the Asian American National Fellowship organized organization to take part of the collective. We might be so diverse in culture, in immigration history, in, in background, but all of us are very committed to the Great Commission, and that's the best strategy that we had right now. It's, if it's about the gospel and it's about reaching the 24 million population of Asian Americans in the United States of America right now, then everybody is in, and we're grateful for that. Peter, thank you for, for sharing that. We'll come back to you later because you're from the Philippines, and uh, I'd, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions just about your perspective uh, having a Filipino origin, if you would. Brother Charles, uh, man, for, gosh, 15 years, uh, you've been serving uh, our African-American churches across, um, across our country, and you've been specifically focusing on uh, the next generation, and you've had a laser-sharp focus on church revitalization in the African-American um, context. And so share with me what you see God doing among African-American churches. Yes, thank you for, for the question. Um, it is a blessing to serve our emerging leaders in this convention. They're passionate 
about advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ in their communities. And when we talk about church revitalization, uh, the main emphasis has to be on the church having an outward focus and secondly be about engaging the community with Jesus Christ. The emerging leaders that I'm coming across, one example is here locally, uh, not far from Anaheim in Compton, uh, California. Uh, Brister Memorial Baptist Church, Pastor Jawan uh, Hilton is an example of one of our emerging leaders uh, engaged in church revitalization. Uh, he took over a uh, dying Southern Baptist Church in Compton. Uh, a little over 11 months ago, and it has quickly grown from 22 members to or 22 active persons attending on Sunday morning to over 175 regularly attending. I happened to be with him on yesterday and just learning about how through a partnership with the local food bank, uh, as well as offering uh, occasional block parties for the community and doing some things uh, that are very revolutionary uh, in terms of reaching the community in block parties so that they are opportunities for his members to hand out tracts uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, he is an example among many other pastors uh, who are seeking to have that outreach focus. And many of our emerging leaders know and have a conviction that it takes being outwardly focused and it takes having a, a outreach ministry that is a platform for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, Charles, thank you so much, man. Well, here, here's, what I, here's what I'm seeing across the country is more and more pastors and more and more churches, particularly in our ethnic communities, they are putting a laser-sharp focus on getting people off the road to hell and getting people on the road to heaven. And, uh, Luis, we are in the state of California uh, at the Southern Baptist Convention uh, annual uh, meeting, and California is one of the most diverse states in the country. Um, the population of Hispanics is exploding across our country and across this state. And then recently, uh, the California Southern Baptist Convention just selected Pete Ramirez as the new executive director for the California Baptist Convention. And by the way, Pete is a Hispanic brother. So what does that mean for the advancement of Hispanics in the Southern Baptist Convention? Thank you, Brother Willie. When you, we think about California, and we think about more than 50, 15 million Hispanics living here, and we think about the appointment of Brother Peter Ramirez as the executive director for this uh, California State Convention, it represents, is an indication of the great progress. Hispanic leaders all across the nation are wanting uh, and willing to contribute in the expansion of the Great Commission. I see wherever I go, Hispanic leaders wanting to, to make a special effort in serving, and I see that many of them are well equipped, ready, and he, it also, I think that his election also serves as a great example for emerging leaders, for people who are coming right behind us and are seeing the opportunity to continue the path of accomplishing the Great Commission in this generation. So I'm so very excited for the election of Brother B Peter Ramirez because it is an encouragement to all minorities, that somebody is there leading us the work who understands the diversity of our country and who was born here in California. So, Wow, wow. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to hear about historical moments, but it's another thing to literally be living in a season where history is being made. And very few people get to live in a season where history is actually being made. And when I think about the ethnic engagement and the ethnic involvement across our Southern Baptist Convention, I think about collaboration and I think about cooperation. And I think about uh, the late Dr. George McCaleb, who pastored the Green Forest Community Church in Decatur, Georgia. And I'll never forget him saying this. He says, uh, I'm not trying to get something from the table. I'm trying to bring something 
to the table. And, and you've heard the phrase, we're stronger together, we're better together. And when we think about the involvement of our ethnic churches, when you think about ethnic churches participating in the cooperative program, and, and by the way, it always blows me away that we have 190 plus million dollars that are mobilized to spread the gospel to the nations and the neighborhoods. And not one church can do that by themselves, but a number of churches coming together. So, so talk about how our ethnic churches can be a part of the greatest mission-sending movement in the world as they give through the cooperative program. So, so Luis, you talk about the Hispanic community. Yeah, well, I think that we all know that cooperation is part of God's agenda in working together, serving together. As we Hispanic churches begin to network and begin to uh, help each other and connect with local associations, with the state conventions, and at the national level, we see that we can go farther than we can ever dream working together. So it's part of being intentional, it's part of being uh, biblical in the mandate of cooperating because God is among the togetherness of the work that we do as Southern Baptists. So I'm blessed to be able to serve with church leaders who are willing to say, hey, this is not about us, it's about God, and how we can cooperate with each other is a way to do it through the cooperative program. Wow, thank you so much. And you know, um, uh, Peter, as I think about the Asian community, one of the things I'm learning like in the past few months is the over-the-top generosity that exists in our Asian churches. Yesterday, I was at the uh, Mandarin Church of L.A., and man, just a over-the-top generous people. Tell us today about what God is doing through cooperative program through our Asian churches across our convention. Yeah, the last time I checked the annual church profile of giving of uh, our Asian churches, Asian churches uh, had given to uh, uh, the past year for about 3.3 million uh, to the cooperative program. And if you are going to check IMB, uh, all of the non-white uh, or non-Caucasian missionaries, we have about 200 Asian American missionaries with International Mission Board, and we're growing in, uh, in new church plan among Asian churches across the United States of America. And so I'm, I'm glad that Asian churches is getting it. We don't just pray. We don't just give. We go. And so we develop our own leaders within our local churches. So a lot of them are homegrown, and in that way, they don't just, you know, participate in, in, in praying and in giving. But above all, we want them to participate, be in the field, be in the field. Because it's been a while, been four years that we are, we were the recipient of the gospel. We have been um, doing that for many years. But right now, we see not only Asian Americans, but all of our ethnic churches are becoming a force. Um, sending their missionaries, getting involved even for a mission trip or long-term long, long, long -term, uh, missionary endeavor. And we're glad that we're in this together. Wow. I, I'm grateful for what God's doing through our, through our Asian churches. You know, Charles, um, I grew up in the black church experience. Uh, you had the black church experience. And, man, there's just nothing like the black church experience. And one of the things that we do in so many of our black churches is we take love offerings and we take missions offering, how, how, can, how can our African-American churches look at what they're already doing and, and merge that through cooperative program and have an even greater impact in the life of our convention? Right. Yeah, so one of the uh, misknown facts about African-American churches we find in the Southern Baptist Convention is that our convention may not be aware that many of our churches are going on international mission trips. They're just doing it themselves. They're funding it themselves. And so one of the ways to motivate and encourage giving to the cooperative giving program is for them to recognize that, hey, they can be involved internationally in a greater way uh, and an even more impactful way by giving to the cooperative giving program because regardless of the size of the church, whether it be small, medium, large, uh, they are able to 
have an impact on the kingdom of God and they are supporting our uh, international missionaries uh, who are fully funded. And so I'm finding that one of the ways to encourage giving to the cooperative giving program is simply to remind them that, hey, it doesn't matter what size your church, uh, every little bit you give helps towards supporting uh, missions abroad. And so I've found that to be one of the most effective ways to bridge the gap between what they're doing already, but yet encourage them to give to something even larger. Well, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful that uh, among our ethnic churches, we are seeing increased giving through the cooperative program and more of our ethnic and racially diverse churches are uh, finding ways to engage their members, uh, not just to give toward missions, but to pray uh, for missions and to go and to be involved on the, on the mission field. Here's, here's what I'm interested in is there are always up and coming leaders, uh, leaders that maybe nobody knows their name, uh, nobody knows their ministry, nobody knows their influence. And I, I'd love to hear uh, Charles in the African-American community Peter in the Asian community, Luis in the Hispanic community. Who are the up-and-coming leaders uh, in your community that we need to keep our eyes out because God's at work in their ministry now, and uh, pretty soon God's going to use them to serve maybe in a state convention or to serve even on a national level. So, so who are those people? And Luis, we'll begin with you, man. <laughs> That is a great question, and I bet there is a long list of leaders that we could mention, and we probably need more time for that. But let me mention, in the case of Hispanics, two names that I think that are going to be. One is Jesse Miranda in Texas. I think that he's doing a great job serving as the uh, president of the Hispanic Baptist Fellowship there. And another one is a church planter in Canada, uh, uh, Jose David. El Bastar, he's going to be there, and, and he, this church planter is doing Fasolino. He is doing a great job as a church planter and multiplying, and I think he is one of those leaders that is going to be serving our convention very well. Awesome. Peter. Well, well, we're so excited uh, for just the past four years, uh, a few years, that we're engaging all of our Asian churches, uh, immigrant churches or Asian churches, or just plain church, but it's a multi-Asian uh, in, in membership. We have been discovering a lot of uh, uh, potential and emerging leaders among Asian American churches. Uh, uh, just for one, I was in Dallas, out of Dallas, is here's a, a Korean church, you know, one of the largest churches we have among Asian, and, and a pastor by the name Ryan Lee, and he's only 38 years old and leading the way and, and never heard of. And uh, we have so many here in California. Uh, we have the two preachers, uh, one yesterday and today, by the name Handy Lu of the Chinese Baptist Church, Walnut, and then Bethany Baptist Church uh, this morning preach. And uh, those are emerging leaders that we have, and Terrin Shea and Yang Lee and m many of those Asian names, very familiar, and you're going to need to look out for them and watch out, and uh, they're engaging more than, than ever. Brother Charles. Yes, yeah, so, wow, we have several emerging, not only emerging leaders, but influential leaders that I could mention. But I'll just give you two because these two are tied to networks in our convention among African-American uh, leaders uh, that seem to come together around these two leaders. Uh, they are Cam Triggs. Uh, he's out of uh, Orlando. Uh, Florida, and he was a church. He was a church planter out there. Uh, his church is growing, um, and then uh, there is also Daryl Jones, uh, who is uh, in Miami, Florida, also a church planter. These two brothers are uh, tied to a larger network of uh, emerging leaders in our convention, uh, and I believe Daryl Jones is a part of the pastors' conference that's taking place right now. But these uh, two brothers have influence along with their friend uh, Chip Luter uh, as far as the broader network of emerging uh, leaders in our convention. So am I hearing you say I have to live in Florida to become an up-and-coming <laughs> leader, right? Well, not necessarily, but I tell you, it's a great place to be. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, listen, thank you for joining us in this conversation today. 
uh, the Southern Baptist Convention is indeed one of the most ethnically and racially diverse network of churches helping to get people off the road to hell and getting them on the road to heaven. God bless you and have a great afternoon.